Episode 14, Dog Abusers Must Go. Your turns this guy into a volleyball. Even Borf is shocked. I hope his name is Borf. Indeed. This is not Violet Evergard. <laughs> Save the dog too. Good luck. <laughs> I like how she's already declared safety, despite this terrorist organization and this whole group. But she's not wrong. But we need to save the dog. Oh no, 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 no. Kill him, you're... <laughs> Bring her along so she can, she can witness. Anya can witness true justice. Still curious about this dog's future sight powers. That This is our new family member. His name, for now, is Borf. But I was afraid you would say no to me adding this dog to our family. So I just went ahead and did it. And it worked, so I'll probably do it again. Mission 14, disarm the time bomb. She better get Estella for this. I don't know what to make of this, it seems kind of overpowered. <gasps> no, 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 it's a fake out. That is a fake out. I mean, he's often busy. That's what that means. But can they change the future? One scene? That would be a huge game. That means Anya can see the future through Mr. Dog's eyes. This seems to suggest that they can indeed change the future. This is the future if nothing is done about it. How far ahead is the dog seeing? Is all this deliberate? Are we all just living in Borf's world? I can't really communicate this. At a certain point, I think telling her about the powers is better and outweighs the, the danger of her knowing. Assuming she would even believe it. Well, I guess she can prove it really easily. Time to run off again immediately, right after apologizing. But Yor has super speed, so we're good. And the power of anime running. Keith, I don't know, something about him seems kind of unhinged. Now his back is against a wall. <laughs> Definitely brainwashed though. Death to the pigs, etc. Have you ever been killed by anyone? That's a weird. Have you ever been shot with a silencer by someone named Handler? This sounds like it's coming from experience. Also sounds exactly right. Yeah. Actually, I feel like it's really fitting having them be students. It's really seductive to try to identify an enemy. You know, like this is the singular fault. A group or a class or a person or an ideology that is like the source of the world's problems. But I feel like that is almost always going to be wrong. Which doesn't mean that there isn't evil and it doesn't mean that there aren't laws and things. But the origin of evil is much bigger. It's just sort of the chaos of life. The fact that to exist is a struggle against nature. And targeting any one thing is never going to stamp that out. And very often it's going to contribute to evil because by over-focusing and over-targeting a specific thing, and seeking to eliminate that thing through whatever means necessary, be it violence or, or what have you, means you're ignoring something critical. You know, you're probably ignoring some truth, you're ignoring the nuance of a situation. And sometimes I feel like that's deliberate. You know, it's like a way of lashing out and justifying easy solutions that are that are gratifying. Seeing yourself as being good, you know, seeing yourself as being aligned with the right side or the right cause or whatever. And seeing other people as expendable or just tools in that. Making it easy to justify all sorts of horrendous things in the name of being righteous. I think it's also worth noting that a lot of times this kind of outlook is, I don't want to say deliberately manufactured. Although it could be, but it's more like it's crafted through a process of, of natural selection where there's someone or some group who stands to gain from the downfall of another. And the most compelling arguments those self-interested parties can construct will be the ones that gain the most traction. And oftentimes those are the ones that make people feel very emotional, whether it makes them feel good about themselves, feel self-righteous, gives them a sense of justified anger. Those are very closely connected. Things that give people an identity that's very powerful and they will gain traction and they'll gain hold if they pass a certain tipping point because they're emotionally powerful and compelling and they give people what they 
they may be looking for because sometimes there's a huge lack of purpose or something to believe in in the world. And so people become further entrenched into their groups and narrow, unnuanced points of view and become more likely to commit the same types of evil that if they were to truly understand, I believe would be against. Since I believe generally people are well-meaning and you know don't want to do evil or wouldn't want to do evil if they understood the depths of their evil and the effects it had, which is why Handler's speech is, is so excellent, you know, because the people who are doing this kind of thing, especially for, you know, young people who are just very idealistic, they're not thinking about the aftermath or they don't feel it in its full complexity. It's just sort of disassociated facts to them. I think part of one's responsibility is to not take the easy route in terms of concept and to embrace nuance. And even if that feels weak, you know, it's it's hard to embrace nuance at first because it's destabilizing. Suddenly you realize how little you know. You realize that you're forced to be humble, that perhaps you're less significant than you thought. But I think that's a positive step towards something beautiful, which is actual understanding. And I think with actual understanding, you actually can maybe do some good, even if it's at a smaller scale than you, you know, first hoped. I still have hope for this German Shepherd. He's a good boy, just in bad hands. But the German Shepherd just wants Keith to be happy. He's a, he's a good boy. Little does he know. That's one of the beautiful things about dogs. They just love you. They love you even if you're evil. Yeah, I mean, they've actually seen it. They actually know it. And we're just gonna run right into it. We're gonna run into the explosion. It's a great plan. Someone get this guy some water. Oh no, Anya's studies are not... Not the best. Does she... Yeah. School. Who knew school could actually be useful? Anya made her lessons irrelevant by just being able to ask questions. It's the bad guy boss, yep. And the bad guy boss, good dog. We gotta find him a home too, come on. It's a trap. Door trap. But it's all worth it for our enlightened plan, because we surely know what is good, good for the world. I'm sure they're, they're gonna love it, yes. Let's not do that. Let's not open it. Let's not touch that. Yes. Yes, well, I don't know what you were thinking. Is there a way you could open it from afar? Don't try to disarm the bomb. <laughs> and the, the bomb doesn't even have colors. That's breaking every rule of bombs in media ever. How are you supposed to have a red wire, blue wire dilemma without colors? Yeah, the, I love how she gets all the way to the bomb. <laughs> before asking herself that question for the first time. That's what I'm saying! He, 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 it's not fair. He truly is evil. Movies have, have lied to me my whole life. I don't want to believe it. Yeah, you could just like wait outside and okay, it's too late for that. This is an easy lie. I heard him talking about it in his hideout. He mentioned a booby trap on a door. Ketchup. I know ketchup is the answer, but I don't know why. No. <laughs> oh, she got out. Okay. I mean, in this spy world, I wouldn't put it past them. They have the most bizarre signals. Goodbye. Well, at least she prevented Lloyd's death. <laughs> we'll never know what time it actually was, though. I was totally expecting that other spy to die, and I was also expecting not to care because I'm not attached to him. But Lloyd figured it out. Yeah. Gee, I wonder <laughs> what gives you that idea. Maybe elaborate on the message a little bit, like bomb. There is a bomb. What? What? I don't trust it. I don't trust it. This is Lloyd. This is Lloyd. It's Lloyd. It's Lloyd. I finally got it. I finally got it. 
they switched him with his clothes for a cent. He just saved your life. He gets results, even if his methods are questionable. Place for a confrontation. Did he just get shot in the head, or did he duck? He ducked. He just had that bomb just ready. There's the, there's the explosion. Is he alive? This isn't suspicious at all. Prime Minister just alone, hoofing it. But what about the dog? You don't deserve the dog's love. You don't deserve anyone's love. Don't do it! Don't- no. That would be a path that I do not want Lloyd to cross. I mean, I get it, but no. No. Damn, yours not the only one who has, has moves. <laughs> Indeed. How do you think he got this position in the first place? He got elected, elected after a parkour battle. Don't shoot. Don't do it! He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Oh no! There's no way he shoots the dog. There's no way. You can't. There's like rules you you can't break. Lines you can't cross as characters if you want to be likable. Some shows have their their characters veer in and out of greatness. Askeladd in Villain Saga is a great example of, you know, really dark character who has moments of greatness that you somehow maybe end up rooting for. This is not the show. Lloyd's not the one, right? This is turning into a real arc already to start the, the second half of season one. We better have some good warm-hearted family stuff to balance this out. I miss Damien and Becky. We need a dodgeball episode to round this one out, <laughs> I think.